Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we're missing some of the usual suspects. Mimi's not here. Scott Todd's not here. But you know who did show up? The Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing well, Mark. Thank you for asking. Good to see you. We've got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I am great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Good to see you. And of course, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. You know what would be great, Tate? What's that? If I could just watch how you work. If I could just look over your shoulder. Check out thelandgeek.com forward slash lots. Tate, how are you? I'm doing really well. Really excited for today's podcast. We got a cool topic, and we have a really cool. Fun. We have a really cool topic, and I'm going to start it off with a story. So let's rewind the tape to the year 2000. Um, Tate, you were probably still in diapers, but for the rest of us, we 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 remember that that year. And I'm going to my first tax deed auction, and I've got three grand saved up for car repairs. I'm, and I'm having this conversation with my wife. And she's like, what happens if you buy a bunch of property at this auction and you can't sell it? I said, oh, well, look, if I can't sell it, I bet you that I could barter it and I could get maybe free dental work for the year or maybe I could get free haircuts for a year or two. Like I was kind of walking through, like there's someone out there that's going to want this land. I just might have to like, do some barter for it. And she was like, okay, that sounds good. So, you know, worst case, we're not going to lose anything. It's not like you're going to, you know, trash the house with a bunch of stuff that you just bought. <laughs> like, no, it's just all paper. You know, maybe I have some maps. That's it. So that uh, that's how it all started. So this week's topic then is we're going to go around the round table. Have any of you guys ever bought land and then instead of selling it for cash or on terms, use it for barter? Let's start with you, Zen Master. Have you ever done a barter deal? No, I haven't. I've had people offer me uh, different things, motorcycles and cars and things of that nature, but um, it's not my uh, expertise, those type of things. So I, I didn't take advantage of it. So. Starting off with the most boring answer. No, I've never done that. Um, I'm, I'd be open to it, I suppose, depending on what uh, the item was. But um, might have all been bread and butter, you know, just selling them for uh, cash or on terms. So I haven't done that. Not opposed to it, but uh, just don't have a story to relate re regarding it. Okay. Okay. Um, dude, buddy. Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Another boring answer. I, I have not. Uh, I know people in the community who have, and, and the reason this came up as well is, is because we were talking on uh, office hours last night in flight school about uh, somebody's on the verge of a bulk deal and they're, and they're possibly going to trade a whole fleet of old cars for a whole fleet of land, which I think is kind of a cool idea. So yeah, I don't know if you have some things sitting around. I wish I had some, you know, I wish I had some Legos sitting around. Like, you know how valuable those things are? The the last year's Legos, they double in price. I might become a Lego investor or something like that in barter land that way. But no, I've not done a barter deal. Although, like Mike says, uh, many people have offered. Uh, the weirdest thing I was ever offered for a trade was some um, like land sea vehicle down in Florida. And uh, I, I just don't have it in my bandwidth to travel down to Florida to pick that up. Uh, and use here in Wisconsin, so. Huh. huh. Interesting, interesting. So, but you've never done a deal. Mike, you've never done a deal, but you guys have been offered these deals. Right. Now that we're talking about it, why wouldn't you, like, why didn't you do it? Like, Mike, let's I, just start I, with you. I loved the idea. You know, I was looking at it and, you know, it was sort of this romantic idea. I was like, Laura, let's go get this, I forget what kind of car it was and we can, we can drive it back from, um, I think it might have been Texas or somewhere. I mean, that'd be kind of a cool thing to do. But then just the logistical parts of it, or practically speaking, if I were to go down and look at that car, I'd have to get um, some sort of uh, 
you know, mechanic down there. I don't have intimate knowledge over vehicles. I wouldn't want to get taken advantage of on the price. So, you know, I could probably do an appraisal from here and all this, but I, I guess there's a way to do it, but I just felt unsure with the actual value of the vehicle that I was offered. And so I think another time was a motorcycle. I don't ride motorcycles, so I would have had that towed out here. Um, so, no, I, I just didn't feel comfortable because it's out, you know, I, I, it's outside of my wheel well. It's not, I don't really have much um, knowledge of in those areas. Okay, Scott, how about you? I mean, I think if it was the right item in the right location, I would definitely consider it. I mean, if if I'm looking for a for a car for my uh, new teenage driver, which I will have three here in the next year, that's a lot of cars, um, and it was across town, I think I may definitely consider something like that. But it just hasn't been the right situation. Right, right. Um, Eric Peterson, how about you? So I think... I've been offered maybe guns and motorcycles in the past. Uh, none of those deals ever really came to fruition. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I think that kind of like everybody else is saying is, you know, I'm not an expert on, you know, motorcycles or cars or, or whatever that item might be. So it's going to require additional work on my end. Plus it might, require a bunch of extra logistics in terms of getting that item from point a to me and um you know there's there's a cost to that time right um we talk about how money loves speed so we want these easy deals that we can do quickly um so it's often hard to make those bartering deals work um because of that i mean i think that if if i knew the value of the item you know i would be offering substantially less than its value. I mean, almost like how we buy land, right? In order to take that on a barter because there's so much more involved in it than just, you know, the item itself. So um, I guess to, to take it a step further, um, you know, the closest thing I've done to a barter would be taking payment um, in the form of precious metals for property. Um, so, I mean, it is kind of a barter because it's a, a physical item um, and it's not necessarily spendable cash. Um, so that would be the closest thing. And, and what happened with that was I, uh, it was actually like the first property I sold. Um, a guy locally wanted to buy the property. He wanted to meet me at Starbucks and give me a down payment in both silver coins and gold coins. Um, and then we ended up closing through title and he wanted to pay the balance in, um, silver and gold as well. Um, because I was new, just getting started, um, I only let him pay for, I think like 50% of the value in precious metals and I wanted the rest cash. So I had something that I could immediately put back in the business. But, um, you know, that was kind of a, a fun little adventure doing that. Um, and, you know, I think the other things, the more larger physical items would require a bit more, um, logistics and, and time invested in order to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. That, that totally makes sense to me. Um, Tate, how about you? So, you know, I had a guy offer me a dirt bike one time and it was, a it was a new model. I think it was like 2018 or something like that. And I went online. I've never ridden a dirt bike at all. I know nothing about it, but I was like, I'm getting this. I want this. Uh, I'm doing this and he ghosted me. So that was the only opportunity that I've really had a chance to like get something that I wanted. Again, I, I don't even have a car that could pull a dirt bike, but I was going to get that. I don't even know how to ride one, but I told my wife, I was like, some guy wants to trade me a KTM. I'm doing this. And she's like, what do you need a motorcycle for? I'm like, I don't know, but I'm into the land for like $1,500. It's an eight thousand dollar dirt bike. I'm doing this, and she's like, "Okay, whatever, do it." it never happened. So, I mean, I'm a little bit bitter still, if you can't tell. But uh, <laughs> you know, I was gonna risk it. I, I thought, you know, this is cool. I'll, I'll take my chances on this one. It could have been a dud, but I don't know. Never worked out. Um, that, I've also had other people offer me like old boats, old vehicles, and at the end of the day, you know, I'm really into cash that's what i really want uh, it's easier on the tax side of things it's easier for me to spend and turn over and do those kind of things so 
that's what I'm my main focus is on. I would love for somebody to pay in Bitcoin or some something like that, just because hey, that's cool. Why not? Um, I'm open to it if it's the right deal. But uh, unfortunately, I've never really had a cool story there. But I do have uh, one of our coaching clients, Mark, who had a pretty awesome story. Can I share that? Yeah, yeah, Zach. Yeah, so Zach uh, had a guy trade him some old Mustang for the car and basically, or for a property. And uh, he had picked up the land for $3,000. He was selling it, I think, for 15 or 16 grand. And the guy says, I don't have the money, but I do have this old vehicle. Zach's dad is actually a classic car guru. So he says, hold on a second, he calls his dad. And his dad's like, he, he says to his dad, I've got this car. Here's the model. Here's the make. Here's the year. It's all original. And his dad's like, I'm in the truck driving to wherever this guy is. Give me his address and I'll meet him there. We'll load it up immediately. So Zach called the guy up. He's like, yeah, I'll take the vehicle. Uh, he traded it for like $16,000. His dad takes the car, drives it um, around, does a check on it. Everything's good. And he ended up flipping it, I think, for like twenty seven or 28000 so not only did he sell his property, but he sold it for basically double what he originally wanted. So that's a pretty cool story. But I think the key is he had somebody who knew what they were doing. And if you're not a classic car guy or a motorcycle person, like I don't even know what you call those people, like a moto guy. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> like a motorhead or... <laughs> yeah, right, maybe right. this isn't the right move for you. But uh, it's cool to see that this option definitely exists out there. You know what somebody needs to do, Mark? Is they need to post an ad on Facebook that says, you know, $10,000 or best offer or trade and see what the craziest thing is that somebody's willing to trade for one of these properties. That'd see, I cool. think that's, that is an interesting marketing concept. If you're, so like, let's just pick on Bossman for a second, right? Like I guarantee he knows the value of Star Wars memorabilia or like a baby Yoda. And so he could go in and be like, okay, I paid $500 for this land, you know, and I'm going to sell it for, you know, maybe four grand on terms. My cost basis is 500. So you can say, hey, look, you know, 4,000 on easy terms or best trade if you own the following items that are, you know, worth, you know, $4,000 to me. But then Scott's got a new problem, which is, now I got to make sure it's an authentic piece. So it's like what Eric was saying, like now it's a headache in a, in a sense of, of determining value. You've got another logistical step. We're also spoiled in the way that we do this model because we make it so sort of frictionless with the payment process and getting automated payments. It's all, it'd be almost better for Scott to take the cash and then go to an auction house and buy his baby Yoda. But uh, Mike Zeno, what are your thoughts? So you just inspired me. I'm thinking like we all have like some cheap properties we pick up here and there. Why don't we all like go out and list one of our cheap properties and offer a trade and see what we get offered and come back and tell everybody. Let's just have a little fun with it. And I, I have a few properties I do that. I'm going to do that. I'm inspired. I'm going to see what people are going to offer me. All right. I mean, it'd be crazy. Like I, I bet you could get like a used Peloton. Like, you <laughs> see know, if I could get something. a Peloton. Maybe I should look for the Peloton. You yeah. Can't that... get a Peloton. I want to get a Peloton. Okay, we let, let's, let's go around and be like, okay, what would you trade a piece of land for right now? Eric? Oh, man. I don't know. And if you're um, listening, make make Eric an offer. Maybe yeah. maybe some, um, some hardscape or landscape in my backyard. Hardscape Ooh. or landscape? What is hardscape? Like, you know, patio, stonework, that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So you'd want a service. Yeah. See, that just that didn't even cross my mind that I could be bartering for to, ha to have my pool refinished or something like that. Fun. Like, that right. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, that's, that's what I would do is somebody come and refinish my pool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you, so you want a pool refinished. Eric, you want hardscape landscape. Mike, is it unlimited kibby for two years? <laughs> You know, I'd be more inspired by some sort of uh, like rare Buddhist book or some rare some something kind of unique like uh, like that. I don't know. I see because that's what I know. Right? I don't know anything about cars or boats. I would be 
easily taken advantage. I'd have to think of something I love, uh, or maybe like some old weapon, like an old Japanese sword or something. You know, something like that. There you yeah. go. Game on. Game on. Um, for those people that love Step Brothers, yeah. <laughs> I got I got a, an autograph on the samurai sword from Randy Jackson because. You're not not going to get his autograph, and this is the only thing I had. Um, is this true? Wait a minute. I'm, this I'm is part of this. It's, 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 it's a line from Step Brothers. Oh, okay. I don't know. You got what do you got, Mark? You want to trade? <laughs> <laughs> um, Scott Boston, how about you? You're on mute. There you go. Yeah, I might might trade for some sports memorabilia or. Um, uh, some Star Wars memorabilia, sure. Uh, my my wife Erin is pushing real hard right now for the the new Peloton tread. Those are pretty spendy, so that'd be a nice that'd be a nice trade. That'd be a nice trade. I think for me, I'd want like some kind of lessons. Um, you know, <laughs> like like I want to learn how to fly fish or oh, like surf or um, I mean, Tate actually does owe this to me, like mountain biking lessons. You, you know, make sushi. <laughs> what about sushi? how to make sushi you know all i can picture is like you know remember the end of, of um uh, wheel of fortune like i could picture myself now i'm in that magic window i wanted to be when i was a kid and i'm looking around i'll take that sword over there and i'm picking up all these <laughs> i'll take some sushi lessons <laughs> right right but, you know, yeah but the problem is is like now you know I'm, I'm in this negotiation like oh do you want this piece of raw land for this you know for these fly fishing lessons and, and they're like, like why don't you just pay me like okay so yeah, i mean the, problem, the that... problem is for us is that it's not like the land is hard to sell if it was a no. hard asset to sell i could see barter as a really viable option but well if you had something you couldn't find and it was rare and you could always just attach it to your ad all the time and maybe with all of this thousands of ads that go out there you might uncover this one thing you're looking for just sort of like a little just you know well and a samurai sword <laughs> right and maybe maybe after thousands of ads someone was like yeah i got this old uh this old samurai sword sitting in my basement i got from my great great grandfather um yeah I'm like, boom bingo like maybe i'll uncover it just add it to my ads tag word hashtag samurai sword all right so if you're listening to this and you are a hardscape landscape expert you have sports memorabilia um and uh you have a samurai sword, um, and you can do pool deck landscaping, and you can teach me something <laughs> cool. Let us know. We've got land for you. We'll make you a deal. We'll do our first barter deal. Now, the other issue is, if you're listening to this, don't think just because you do barter, you're not going to have to pay tax on the barter. You do have to pay taxes. It is, it is a thing. Nope. I mean, if you get audited, I guess. Scott. You guys know there is a barter section on Craigslist, so let's we could all go in there. And... I'm doing it. There, yeah, I'm doing bar, it too. Yeah, there are barter sites. Yeah, I know. I know a land guy that had a barter site, and he would get all types of crazy stuff with the first land. Right, I mean, I'm doing, it, it. I'm doing it. Like, what do I got to lose? I could always just say no, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not interested in, you know, learning karate. So bring bring me the next thing. Like, okay. Oh, you're gonna teach me, you know, jujitsu? Okay, way better. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, that was a slight dig. Did he just do a giant <laughs> orange dig on me there? Somebody's gotta be here for Scott. Somebody's gotta take Scott's place. Well, I got I'm looking on the barter site right now on Craigslist and somebody has listed land in the in the barter in the barter section. Is anybody listening to samurai sword? Is there a samurai sword in there? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. This is, uh, wow. This is interesting. Even um, we learn on the round table, see? <laughs> yeah, no, this, I thought this was a really good topic. And um, hopefully the listeners are getting value from it. Uh, and speaking of value, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally change your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with someone who's literally done it thousands of times with Scott Todd. The next uh, 
the next class is October 28th. Start signing up now. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call with the Zen Master or the Nightcap OG. And let's start building that passive income machine in real time with Scott Todd. This is not academic. You are going to be working the business with your class over the next 16 weeks in doing deals. And we guarantee that's not going to cost you anything. You will make back your flight school tuition investment, 180 days or less, guaranteed. Just show us your work. So now, Mike Zeno, we're at that point in the podcast <laughs> where we get to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Otherwise known as the time we make fun of Mike's quotes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I always like to think of Scott Todd as the Mr. Miyagi of land investing since we're talking about all these philosophies and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> so today's quote comes from the Book of Five Rings. So talk about swordsman. He's a famous swordsman from the 1600s, undefeated, wrote his principles for success. And many business people do use this today because the concepts are universal. And I know I talked a little bit on Coffee Talk, Mark, but afterwards we talked privately about this one. So I was just going to read it here, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. All right, it's great that Scott Todd's not here, but I'm sure, sure somebody else will pick up the slack and uh, tell me that I, my quote, just don't forget to breathe. Um, so this one's beco becoming new. It says, when fighting with enemies, if you get the feeling of snarled up and you're making no progress, you toss your mood away and think in your heart that you are starting everything anew. As you get the rhythm, you discern how to win. This is becoming new. So the last part of it is, Anytime you feel tension and friction building up between yourself and others, if you change your mind that very moment, you can prevail by the advantage of radical difference. This is becoming new. So I think if we were to insert rather than enemies, but you know, your own, our own battles when we're building our business, there's many times that uh, we're working on something and it can get very frustrating. It can get uh, a little overwhelming and you got to step back, take a larger perspective on things. Uh, you know, it's sort of like if you're in your room, uh, you can stand up on the table, get a better view of it. You know, just change it up. Like, like literally try to think of it from a different perspective rather than keep trying to like, because how many times have we all done that where we're just trying to solve something in our business and we're trying to hit it higher and higher. And the more effort that we put into it, uh, the harder it gets. But I think the idea that, that's important here is to change your perspective, change your view and look at it from a different in a different way that could bring about um the result that you're hoping for. So I think this is why people love this book. It's very universally applied. No, I I, I personally like it. I, I, I get the sense Tate is not happy about it. <laughs> no, I'm just I, I'm just oh. taking it in. Uh, oh. I'm just trying to, you know, figure this out. But uh, I do see how get it the could book, be. Tate. I'm going to send you a copy, Tate. That'll help. Send me a book. Send very, me a book. Very thin, easy to read. Good. How many pictures? Uh, no pictures. Uh. <laughs> but anybody who's out there is a fan of the Avatar, which is a really great show. They're going to make a great movie out of it. It's a cartoon, but it's really got some great philosophy. This is similar. It's got the Earth book, the Water book, or the Scroll. They say so. It's a fun read, and you can take it in little doses. One of those books you can kind of open up any way you want and read and get some value. So I love having. It. I have it right here on my desk. Next to the Artist Way, the Morning Journal, which I know Tate loves that tip from Scott a few weeks ago. <laughs> oh, look, Tate, are you going to take that? Look how he's stirring the pot. Ah, uh, yeah. No, I'm no, just I'm saying gonna it's... Let it. Go. I'm going to let it go. I mean, it's fine. Journaling, such a new concept. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them that the only way Tate is going to continue showing up every single week on the Roundtable podcast simply to make fun of Zeno is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money in 30 days or less. Um, Eric Peterson, are we good? We are good. Mike, are we good? Great. Perfect. Scott Bossman? We are excellent. Tate? Yep. Let's do All this. Right. Let's do this. One, two, three.
three. Let's let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Pretty good, actually. Pretty good. Um, how about that Carol Baskin uh, commercial? It was airing during Dancing with the Stars. Wow. Where is Don? Yeah. I think he's down in another country there. That's where I think he is. I know everybody fights me on that, but I, I think he just took his plane and went away. Can you blame him? I think he's in a tiger's tummy. <laughs> oh, the tiger tummy. <laughs> That's the next series, the tiger tummy. The tiger tummy. We, we did talk about this. You were the only one, Mike, that thought that he faked his own he death. He had the means, didn't he? Ha it wasn't like he was poor. He could disappear if he wanted to. I think it's, I mean, I guess. But, I guess. you know, he, he's got his family. Why would he want to? I get it. It's a, it's a complex issue, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. He probably bartered one of his cats for a piece of land down in wherever he was going, Puerto Rico. There, yep, yeah, there it is. The barter concept. Look how, look how Scott just brought that full circle. Just brought it around. I love it. All right. All right, guys. Well, have a great day. Thanks, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. See ya. Thanks, Mike. See ya.